Hey guys, what is up? Eric Hill here, one half of the Hill Twins, and today I'm back at it again with another video. Today I am not joined by Eon for this particular video, but ultimately we're going to jump in to another match with Frieza versus Beerus. Again, you guys have been asking, and so we're delivering. Before this video gets started, guys, I want you guys to go ahead and subscribe. It costs you nothing and uh, hit that like button so that this video can be spreaded out to all the other Dragon Ballers around YouTube um, so that they can have this information as well. We're very dedicated into helping the community grow as community members and leaders and uh, competitive players. And uh, yeah, I mean, we just really wanna share this advice with you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So, Let's go ahead and click this. And we're just gonna jump right in to the match, okay? Um, so as you guys can see, it's um, Frieza versus Beerus. This is one of the um, the matches that a lot of Frieza players are um, pretty worried about. And so um, I, just, I just wanna take it back a second. I just want to take it back a second. Sorry. And I want to pause it. Let's just let's start it over one more time. <laughs> okay, let's play. There we go. Now we pause it. Okay, so I just want to teach you guys something, right? And this is kind of like the last video that we're going to do because these videos are going to go on Patreon. And um, you will have access to all of these videos. But, um, uh, Basically, let's talk about the hand, right? So when we're looking at our hand, our hand looks good, right? And this is one of the things that I was explaining to players that these hands are called Mirage hands, right? And this is a Mirage hand because why? Well, we have our two drop Ginyu. We have um, our one drop to be able to rest something. We have another one drop Ginyu. We have a super combo. Whenever you see a super combo in a hand, you're like, yo, this, is, this hand looks beautiful. So ultimately, the assortment of cards look beautiful. But when you dive deeper into this hand, there's functional elements that are missing that you don't see here. And obviously, there's no self-awakener. Um, you know, there's no, uh, 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 no things that are going to allow us to progress our game state. Maybe one drops that's going to allow us to draw cards immediately. Yeah, we have a crusher board here. This is cool. But again, this hand is a mirage hand. It looks good. It looks like something you can keep, but you can't keep because you're missing functional pieces to help the game flow for this match. And you're playing against Barris. So all of these cards really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and mully, like as you see in a video. Let's just hit play. And this is a much better hand. Um, I'll just... Sorry. I'll just go ahead and show you guys real quick. We have a Ginyu and a Raccoon. This is really good. This is going to allow us to take our life and have some plays. We have a one-drop Zarbon. This is going to allow us to search for a two-drop Freezer, hopefully. Um... Do we have a Crusher Ball, worst case scenario? So if on turn two, on, if, if I on turn, he drops a one drop, we get to rest it with this draw a card and swing at it. Um, very important to take note of, okay? So uh, yeah, let's hit play. So it's our opponent's turn. One of the, the take, one of the things to take note of is that Barris does not draw cards. So he summons this one drop and he's summoning it preemptively because he's basically saying, if you summon a one drop, I'm going to kill it. It's not gonna survive. But we had the crusher ball like we said, and now we have a target to swing into. So we're just gonna swing at him at this point. And he can't defend, he has four cards in hand, eight life still, and we are sitting with seven cards in hand. We're good to go. We did draw a two drop freezer, which was really good. Um, so now he's swinging crit. Um, he's trying to pressure at this point. I actually misplayed here. I thought he was swinging with the 15k. And so I combo the 5k thinking that it was a 15k. Normally, I will always take the leader swing. I was going to combo out of this crit attack specifically because I knew I was going to attack back into this battle card. So ultimately, two cards out of my hand, unfortunately... 
I didn't mean to, to combo out of the Abyrus attack. But, as you guys can see, um, with that little bit of a misplay, I uh, uh, summon my two drop, and I'm just saying, hey, listen, I'm going to swing into the battle card, get the draw, and now I'm going to swing into life and get my life. So now I'm at six. So I'm at a comfortable position next turn to awaken. I'm not too worried. He's going to four cards in hand, three energy, and I have the energy marker. Also, I just drew this cooler, and this is actually really big. You're going to see how this plays a big part. So he summons this guy here, and he swings into leader. Um, and I'm going to take this crit because I'm going to awaken next turn with what I have in my hand. And then he goes and gets a little greedy and swings the 20k into my, um, my, my, my two drops. So I protect it because... I know that he has three cards in hand. There's no inherent way of killing it unless he's top decks one of the negative 20Ks. So as you guys can see, I'm gambling. I'm taking this life. I'm going to summon again you. I anticipate that I should be able to kill this one drop. And um, because I can awaken, I can summon this one drop again you. I can draw cards and, um, you know, have some, 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 uh, some mobility. And this card was actually really good as well. So I'm swinging in, and he's going to go ahead and protect it, which makes a lot of sense, because now I can't swing with those other battle cards, and that's okay. He can't destroy my board yet. But one of the things to take note of, too, right, and I'm just going to go ahead and pause it, is that he swings, draws no cards, and at this point I'm awakened. So now I can summon these one drops and go one for one without losing value, and on top of that, right... He has to, he has a three energy, three cards in hand. Now he has to charge the four, so he goes negative one. And then if he summons one card, again, he goes another negative one. So he would end up with basically one card in his hand. Our gameplay and our design is to deprive them of resources. They are left to top deck, um, which we can, you know, we're constantly in a state of motion where we're going to just be able to stop them from doing what their uh, goal is. We don't care about the crit right now, and we damn sure don't care about the other things that he can put on the board. So as you guys can see, his hand is looking pretty dead um, at this point. He swings 30k into lead, and this allows me to perfect guard with this extra card. Now I get to rust the three drop um, frost, which is stopping my battle cards from attacking and um perfect guard this uh 30k attack now the three drop on his case was not bad he doesn't have much things to do so the three drop wasn't bad however you know i get to actually summon this uh cooler now and swing into it and then rest the other three drop 20k so this is amazing he has one card in hand he has to take the hit now I swing into there and he takes the hit. So as you guys can see, it's not that he did anything wrong, right? It's just that the course of the game had it to where I was actually able to take those crits and develop advantages and deprive him. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again because my goal is to really get you guys to understand, right? So now he has to charge to five. This is big because he can't embarrass my board. The reason why I'm depriving him is because... He doesn't have a card that allows him to draw multiple cards in his turn. Therefore, he has to charge an energy and go one for one. So if he summons this card in his hand, he actually goes neg one. Which, whatever card it is, it's not going to be able to destroy my board. And I will be able to swing into it next turn and kill it because he has no cards in hand. And this is going to give me the chance to build my board. And now I have Kula on board, which is going to inevitably block his leader swings. I don't even have to waste 5Ks anymore. So this is absolutely big. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and press play now. And yeah, as you guys can see, he drops this 5 drops on Goku. This is actually really good. He goes ahead and he nags the cooler in the attempt to kill it. One of the misplays here is, is that he swings with the leader instead of swinging with the battle card first. And I'm going to go ahead and block rest the 35k. And I get to, um, you know, guard out of uh, his leader attacks. Now he has no cards in hand. 
And that means that I get to again draw a card. Swing there, draw another card. Not combo, obviously. Um, and now I get to summon these one drops. Search. Right? And I actually whiff on both of these one drops, which was actually crazy. So had I had hit off of them, it would have been absolutely nuts. It's very rare that you miss off of those Zarbons, but it's okay. He has no cards in hand. He's at five energy. I'm going to um, just build my board because I know that he's at five energy. And this is what's important to take note of, guys. The reason why I'm building my board right now is because right now he can only kill one card. He's a seven life. 20k kit crit that's going to be blocked. So as you guys can see, I'm getting ready for my Onslaught turn. And I untap my cards. Now, he can draw 35k Barris, but guess what? You can't pitch one card. As you guys see here, had I would have hit him for one, he would have been able to blow up my board and change the tide. I go ahead and I, I, I yeah, at this point, guys, I'm going to be able to Raccoon Ginyu again. And once I Raccoon Ginyu... I'm going for the game next turn. He has seven life. There's over 12 attacks on the board, essentially. And, um, you know, seven. He has to go plus six. And then minus however many more attacks um, from the hand. So it, at that point, it's spell game. But ultimately, what I want to get you guys to understand is that the concept is deprive, uh, depriving them. Okay? Um, they're going to attack you. Don't worry about the crit, guys. Take the crit. It's okay. You want to awaken. You don't care. You have one drop Ginyus. You have all these other cards. And you should be able to rebuild what have been lost. Okay? And so that's the point. And that's the most important part. See a lot of people defending those crits and being up in arms about him. Um, also, if he drops those one drops to neg your one drops, chances are you've already went plus one on your one drops, right? All your one drops are cantrips, except for Ginyu. You might not want to summon Ginyu early because they can kill Ginyu, but you can summon those other one drops. And if they summon their one drop, they go minus one. All they're doing is basically giving you cards to attack into. And... Once they do that, the game is pretty much lost. You deprive them. You don't have. You're not in a rush to awaken them, and yeah, that is just pretty much the situation. Um, so that was uh, another game that I wanted to show you guys. Um, kind of deploying that same concept that you've seen recently, and um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the game plan, guys. Uh, if you guys are liking the content. Please, I can't express it enough, guys. Please hit that sub button, guys. We're trying to grow the YouTube to 3,000 members. We have been content creators for literally the last seven years for Dragon Ball. We only have 2 point something uh, thousand subscribers. I don't know why. We make great content. Um, very competitive content. Um, so, want you guys to go ahead. Don't just watch it. Please go ahead and hit that sub button if you're not a part of the Hill Fam. And um, yo, hit that like, man. And um, share this video if you can to another Freezer player. We are going to be um, doing more videos for you guys. But those videos will go on Patreon. Those are going to be Barris matchup versus Freezer. So if you're a Barris player, you will be able to learn how to play Barris against Freezer. We're going to let you know what is disruptive and what's not what you should be doing and what you should not be doing okay and um yeah so without further ado um thank you guys for watching and stay super